Hi, Eric here. Thanks for tuning in. This video is called Watercolor, the Color Wheel, Part 2. Now, if you haven't watched Watercolor, the Color Wheel, Part 1, don't watch this one. Stop. Go back and watch Part 1 and make a color wheel. And once you can mix orange and you can mix violet and you, you understand uh, what we're doing there, then watch this one. Okay, let's uh, make a quick review of what we already learned before we move on. Uh, we've got our color wheel and we've got three primaries, okay? Now, we don't actually have three pure primary colors in our kit, our watercolor kit, and what we have is a system which I call paired primaries. And I get this system from, it's very common, a lot of artists use it. In this case, it's the Cotman watercolors by Winsor Newton, and they're set up in this way. Instead of having red, yellow, and blue, we've got two of each primary. We've got two yellows, two blues, and uh, two reds. And one is slightly cooler, one is slightly warmer in each primary. So let's see what we've got here. For red, we've got cadmium red pale hue. It's scarlet, vermilion. Okay, and we've also got Alizurian Crimson, which is rose madder. It's sort of a wine color. Okay, with the yellows, we've got lemon yellow. It's a little bit greenish. And we've got cadmium yellow, cadmium, something like that. It's going towards orange. Same thing with the blues. One blue is going towards violet, that's ultramarine blue. And another blue is cerulean hue, and that's a little bit green. Uh, it's a little bit cool. Now, some of the kits from these Windsor Newtons come with phalo blue, which I don't have here right now, but uh, it's the bomb. It's a very strong color. You gotta be really careful with phalo blue. I personally prefer cerulean blue, but phalo blue works, turquoise works. There's, there's, these are not essential colors. You can find a variation. But the idea is, th is this, that one is slightly cool and one is slightly warm. And if you need to make a pure color, you can simply mix those two together and get a pure color. Okay, here's our kit. We've got two yellows, two reds, and two blues. Then we have some more colors. Uh, we've got two greens. One is uh, emerald green, viridian, and the other is sort of an olive green, sap green. Um, then we've got three colors which are earth tones. They're neutral colors. That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, these uh, green colors, you can make your own green with just blue and yellow or some combination of uh, blue and yellow, maybe a tiny bit of red, but these are handy colors. One is that emerald green. It's just very much a blue green. It's another strong color. You have to be very careful with that one. And then this sap green, it's a little bit neutralized. It's kind of a warm green, kind of uh, yellow green, but uh, it, it's, it's a good color. It, it approximates the color of foliage and leaves, things like that. So it's a useful color, but technically you don't need these greens. You can make your own greens with blue and yellow. Okay, now we've got these three colors, which are called earth tones. They're natural colors, neutral colors. Uh, that's yellow ochre, which is sort of a gold mustard color, uh, a useful color. And this one is burnt sienna, which is kind of a reddish brown. 
a little bit darker. And this is our darkest color in the palette. That's burnt umber, which uh, is sort of dark, cool brown. And we've also got white. Technically, the artistic purists, watercolor artists, don't use white, but we've got it there just in case you want to use it. Let's take a look at the color wheel we've been working with already. Uh, these colors are pure colors. They're a combination of two colors, um, two primary colors. But in nature, and when you're painting things, outdoors, indoors, wherever, uh, most colors are more complicated than that. Most colors are a combination of three colors, uh, some sort of combination of red, yellow, and blue. Uh, and they don't exist on the outside of the color wheel. They're actually somewhere inside the color wheel. For example, these earth tones we have, the yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, those are in here somewhere. Yellow ochre might be there. Burnt sienna might be there. And burnt umber, somewhere in here. They create a sort of a spiral within the uh, color wheel. And you could mix those colors with red, yellow, and blue, but these earth tones are useful pigments. They're permanent, good quality pigments that are, create a sort of shortcut to neutral, natural colors. But in order to understand the more complex colors like gray, brown, I don't know, the color of cement or the color of bricks or the color of somebody's hair or somebody's uh, skin, somebody's flesh tones. Uh, we need to learn to mix colors that are within the color wheel, that are inside the color wheel, and they're more complicated. They're combinations of, uh, of the primaries. Okay, now, in order to understand neutral colors, uh, natural colors, we need to learn our opposites, our complementary colors. Now, complementary colors are exactly opposite one another on the color wheel. And uh, you really need to memorize at least three of those, okay? So the opposite of red is green, okay? And the opposite of blue is orange. The opposite of yellow is violet. Okay, so with those primaries and uh, their complements, you should be able to mix just about any color you can see. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to make a scale of uh, neutral colors. Now, when you take pure red and add a little bit of green to it, you slightly neutralize that color. So what we have is red with a little bit of green. And then our next color is red with more green. Okay, it turns brown. And here we have the opposite. We've got green with a little bit of red and green with more red. And in the middle, theoretically, that's black because it's a mixture of all the colors. Because if you think about it, red and green, well, what is green? Green is yellow and blue. This is a triangle. And these colors are a mixture of different proportions of red, yellow, and blue. So that's what we're gonna do, a scale that goes from red to green. Okay, I'm gonna make a scale of patches of the different colors. One end is red, I make the red, like we did in the other video, combining the two reds, Alizuri and Crimson, and uh, Scarlet, Cadmium Red Light, until I make a nice convincing true red, sort of the color of a stop sign or a fire truck. Okay, and that goes here. 
the other end is green. And that's cerulean blue and lemon yellow. That goes at the other end of the scale. Always remember to pick up the little blob at the end. Okay, this first patch is red, which has been slightly neutralized. So, take a little red, and I'm gonna add, I'm gonna clean the brush a bit, add a touch of green to that. So it's off red, it's not as intense. That one goes here. Now I don't like it, I'm gonna add some more red. Okay, the next one is red with more green. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with the green. We're gonna make green neutralized by adding a little bit of red. Okay, now I'm gonna make the green a bit more neutral still by adding more red. Okay, in the middle of this scale, between the complements, between red and green, right in the center, theoretically, is black. Now, we don't happen to have black in this kit, and you can always mix black or some version of black, and that goes in the center. Now, I've found that just using green and red doesn't make very convincing black, so I'm gonna cheat, and I'm gonna put a little bit of blue, ultramarine blue in there, just a tiny bit, maybe a tiny bit of uh, burnt umber, and that helps it create a more convincing black. Now, you don't want it to be too strong and too black, it won't harmonize with the uh, scale. Okay, a blob. Now, I admit that's not true black. It's not as black as it can possibly be, but within this scale, it makes a convincing black. I think it's good enough. Okay, now we're gonna try a scale of colors that go from blue to orange. The opposite of blue is orange. So, we're gonna make blue. Once again, I'm mixing the two primaries here. Cerulean and Ultramarine. If you happen to have phthalo blue in your kit, be careful with that one. A little dab will do you. Once it looks to you like a convincing true blue, then uh, yellow and red make orange. Uh, you need to make sure to use the cadmium medium the darker of your two yellows, not lemon yellow, and you need to make sure to use cadmium pale red, scarlet, okay? Otherwise it won't make a decent orange at all. Okay, blue at the top of the scale. Blob. And at the bottom of the scale goes orange. Make sure the brush is nice and clean.
Okay, so now we see how to neutralize colors, how to find colors within the color wheel. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to make a scale of complementary colors of each of the primaries. Red to green, yellow to violet, and blue to orange. Okay, good luck with that.